Hi everyone, it's Ileana and it's been a long time since I've done a video, but uh, here we are again. It's a new year and here's a new card for you. I'm going to start off with a Unity Stamps um, stamp called Migration of Beauty. It's this really gorgeous stamp that has a bunch of butterflies all the way around. I'm stamping it onto some Bristol Smooth cardstock with some Versafine Claire ink. I like to use this ink because it is the blackest ink I have, and it also stays wet long enough for me to add some clear embossing powder. So I'm stamping it multiple times so that I can get nice black um, images. And once I am happy with that, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to heat emboss it. And typically I would use clear embossing powder, but I'm going to use this uh, Brutus Monroe Raven embossing powder. And my reasoning behind that is because the stamp already has several specks in there. And if I miss a, um, if I miss removing the stray embossing powder, then it won't be so obvious. If I use clear, when I go to color, you'll definitely see those clear spots. So by using the black, it makes it look like it's intentional. And so that's why I use the Raven embossing powder. Now I've taken my cardstock and I've taped it down to a piece of compressed wood with some purple tape, just so that it holds it down while I'm coloring. I am using my Zig Clean Color Markers. I did look up on the computer uh, different kinds of butterflies so I can get some ideas on what colors to color them. I kind of struggle with color combinations and so this was very helpful in seeing what colors I wanted to do. I started by coloring the edges of the butterfly with two different colors and then I used one of the uh, markers to blend. The Zig markers are very easy to blend if you use Bristol cardstock. And uh, even if you go back and color them after it's dry, you could still get a good blend. You don't have to do everything while it's wet. It, it just blends really beautifully. You could use either the lighter pen or you could use the blender pen. Uh, either way will work fine. So for this blue one, I'm just going to start with the darker color near the center and just kind of color outwards and flip just a little bit. I did get a little bit outside of the image, outside of the butterfly, and I used the blender pen to pick up that color. So you just kind of color it with the blender pen, clean off the blender pen, and you keep going back and forth until you pick up as much of that um, marker as you can. So for the blending, you can just um, drag the color with the blender pen and you get a little bit of a smoother transition. So I went back and added some flicks just so that it would make it look a little more dimensional. Now with the blender pen, it does hold the color. So you do want to wipe off that color before you change to a different color. Now I actually did see a picture of a pink butterfly, which was my favorite. And the pink does spread out quite a bit so you just want to use a little bit and then you want to wipe off that blender pen so that you, you get a good transition. Now for the purple I had a uh, blue purple and then I had a red reddish purple and by using the blender pen you're you're able to move that color around to where it's very pale and then it's very easy to blend those two colors that uh, don't quite match so well. So by just blending it and then removing the color off your blender pen, you're able to get a very smooth blend between those two different shades. Once I'm done coloring, I'm going to clean up any of the stray ink or pigment that's from the markers that may have gotten on the embossing. Uh, the embossing is slick and so the colors do not dry on that and you don't want to smear it when you touch it. So by using the towel, you can wipe it up. And so I just place it over there and just kind of rub until I know that it's all cleaned up. For my sentiment, I am using the Alta New Amazing New stamp set. 
And I am so sorry that I'm out of frame here. I just started stamping and wasn't paying attention that I was way zoomed in, but I'll try to describe what you're, what I'm doing. I've taken a piece of black cardstock and I've put it into the corner of my mini misty and I use some uh, anti-static powder to remove any static or oils that may have gotten onto the cardstock. I stamped it with some ink on three embossing ink and now I'm using some Brutus Monroe alabaster embossing powder. I'm going to go ahead and heat set that and you could see that part of the sentiment wasn't so crisp and so I'm going to put it back into my mini misty and I'm going to ink it up again. I did I did uh, mask off the thank part of the sentiment because I don't need that for my card and now I'm just cleaning up any stray embossing powder that may have um, still stuck to my card. And now I'm going to heat set that again. Once that's completely heat, heated and cooled, I'm going to use my cut line. I'm going to use the 1 8 inch line from the cut line to trim out my sentiment. I'm going to flip the cardstock around and I'm going to do the same thing again. And I'm going to use the lines on um, the cut line to guide me on where I need to trim it. I'm just going to trim the banner at an angle. And I'm just going to add some embossing powder, I'm sorry, some foam to the back of it. I did try to stamp the U onto the K and I did not like how it looked. So I'm just going to be covering it up uh, with another set of the um, Alta New Bold Alphabet dies. And I've just basically stacked up a few of these. I think there's maybe four layers. Um, I did try to come up with a clever way to add the U to the sentiment, but I didn't like how it looked. And so I went a different route by using the sentiment strip. Now, as most of you know, I do have a piece of metal underneath my craft mat. And so that allows me to use my magnets onto my craft mat to hold things down. So I lined up my cut line and then I placed a bar magnet over the cut line. So it's being held in place by the magnet. And that lets me line things up quite easily. If you don't have uh, that on your uh, underneath your craft mat, use the back of your Misty. You could use that to hold pieces down now I'm just adding the sentiment strip to the bottom with a little bit of foam tape and I am thinking it still needs something. So I want to go back and add a little bit more detail and so I'm going to use the Studio Katia Onyx Black Gems and so I'm just adding that on with my Crystal Katana with some mono, uh, I'm sorry, with some multi matte medium. And that pretty much completes my card. Um, I hope you've really enjoyed this video and if there's anything that you want me to show you with when it comes to the Misty, just leave a comment below. That way I know what kind of videos you need to see and how to use things. Um, also with the cut line if you need another video using the cut line don't hesitate to put it in the comments. I really would appreciate some feedback when it comes to videos. That way I know what you need to see. Thanks so much for watching and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Have a great day.